So hi, it's Angela from Farm Fiber and Arts and I've been spending a little time working on my wool. My husband's working from home so it's kind of hard to use the kitchen to clean my wool and stuff that I need to do. So I kind of said, that's it, you're fired, get out of here. <laughs> Okay. Anyway, so I talked to him and today we have full use of the kitchen and um, we're going to have fun. So here are some of the uh, wools that I harvested this year. Um, I took samples from everybody. Um, I've already cleaned some. Um, so you can see there's leftovers. Um, these are some that I processed myself. And I have these that I just did um, the other day. I did some hand dye here, and that's the top before it's dyed in Scotland. And this is Love Bug. I, ch I saved the noils because that's what I make my um, felt out of. So um, that's Shetland top from Love Bug, and we're gonna dye that. And we're gonna take a trip into the kitchen. And we are going to see how this is doing. Uh, we are now cooling, we're on the cooling down stage to our cleaning. So um, this is Ava. Now Ava is Gotland white. It's just a handful of wool, but um, I brought her up to temperature and now we are going to dump her out and we're going to go collect some raspberries and as soon as we get this cleaned we're going to dye it. So here's some of the fruits that we're going to be working with possibly for dyeing but my big thing is we have some black raspberries and we're going to go out and pick some more and uh, we're going to definitely do black raspberry today. So we're on our way out to the garden and we are going to pick some blueberries. Nope, uh, not blueberries, I'm sorry. Some black raspberries. I don't have too many left. Uh, I picked most of them. We did have a rain. I'm wondering if the ones we have left got knocked down. But um, there's a few. They're big. They're beautiful and big. Just a few left. It looks like the birds might have gotten them from yesterday. That happens a lot around here. We, get, we feed a lot of birds some raspberries and all kinds of goodies. But we'll have enough for what we want to do. And then some, and I'll still be able to make a tart, which was another thing I wanted to do today. Maybe I'll videotape that too. Um, this is the end of the blackberry season. Oh, so sad. They were so good. I got a lot off this bush. I'm gonna leave the, the rest that aren't ripe for you guys. Let me see if I can grab the rest of these. There's quite a few of them. One. I got a lot of blackberries off this bush. Those aren't ripe. We're not gonna take those. We're just taking the ripe ones. I'll leave the, the unripe ones for the little birds. They like them. There's a few on the ground that have fallen. They can eat them. The birds have plenty to eat around here. My flowers are getting beyond their... Oh, I think that's it. One in the middle, and then that's about it. Nope, one more. Nope, it fell. <laughs> I guess that's for a bird. All right, so we've got a few to add to our collection. My plants look a little heavy. My cucumber vine fell, it was growing up and it fell down. So I think I'm gonna help it back up because I like to see the cucumbers hanging. It's so much easier. Got lots of stuff going on here. Look at all these. Look at these bad boys, I can't wait. Got a lot of goodies. Lots of tomatoes, gonna get red. Anyway, that's the rest of the garden. We're heading back out. So this is my porch. These are the, I, I suck the air out of my wool after I shear it because nothing can grow without oxygen. We're in a vacuum. So I've got bags and bags of it. Um, they fell, they were actually packed up to there, but they fell. Always, always geared. 
Oh, he's very scared. He was very upset because we just had a little thunder and a light. So we'll pour these in with the ones that we have. We've got quite a bit. And I'm going to try to get the seeds. These guys, I noticed as I was eating them, have really big seeds. So I am going to uh, put them through uh, a sort of a sieve to try to get the seeds out because I don't want that seed in the wool. So it should be nice and messy. <laughs> All right, so we're getting our pot of wool here. And um, I'm going to, if I can find the tongs. Yeah, I do. I use all my kitchen stuff for this. Goes in the dishwasher, so I feel like it gets cleaned. But this is the first round of washing this little swatch of wool. I'm just gonna dump it in there. Make sure there's nothing left in here. It looks pretty dirty. It doesn't look like there's any wool in there. You put this to the side for now and pour the water to the sea over here because I don't want any wool going down my drain. This is really hot water. And I'm gonna heat up another bath because it's not quite ready. Rinse it out. Look at a little grease that gets around the edge there. It's crazy. I'll fill it up just enough to cover it. I picked the wool, wool pretty well, so I got most of the debris out, but it's amazing. You pull it out of that water and it's like, you tell yourself, I know I got every last piece and time, there it is. I think what happens is in the the, the tips where they, they, they clot together a little bit, I think that's what that's what happens. Oh, we got bubbles. And then we just put this back in there. There it is. She was right back in the pot. And you spread her out, dunk her under. And we'll get her back up to temperature. I usually like to get it up to about 140 to 160 degrees because I'll tell you what, that gives me nice clean wool really quickly. Back on the stove. Oh, with the milk bones. My thing doesn't like to light. We have propane here. And I put it on up there in about 10 minutes, she'll be up to temperature. And uh, then we'll let her sit for about a half an hour and we'll come back to it. I always reuse my bags. I mean, it's silly not to. I mean, it's just so easy to reuse them and you're just putting wool in them. So, you know, there's no point in not reusing them. I mean, I use them over and over. Sometimes I make the mistake of writing on them. I have to get used to not writing directly on the bag, putting a tag on it. And that way, I'm not wasting so much plastic and putting it into the trash. You know, I mean, I don't think the wool cares whether you reuse the bag or not, you know? So I try to reuse when it's possible. I mean, if, even if it's got a hole in it, it doesn't really matter. You know, it's just a bag. So I try to just Rinse them out real good and dry them off somewhere, and you know, they, they dry up. And they dry like by this evening. So, so I dropped my candy thermometer, so we are guessing. Um, I usually, when I see a little steam coming off that, that's when I know it's, it's up to temperature. So I don't want it to boil, obviously. But um, water looks pretty mucky, so we're probably gonna put it in for another bath anyway. Okay, it looks like we are ready to dump again. So I'm gonna grab the pot. And we're gonna just pull this wool out of here. Again. I'm gonna put it to the side this time because I had to move out of that anyway because I like to dump the water through that. Oh, she's getting really clean now. She's getting really clean. I still wanna put her through one more time because uh, look at this water. It's kind of gross, you know? You know I just want to make sure no wool goes down my drain. And I like to let the... I have really hot water here. It goes up to 140 and 120. I think we have it set at 120 so the grandkids don't get burned. But um, 
I want to let this get pretty hot before I it's hot to have. All right, so we're going to fill this back up for one more bath, and then we are going to rinse her. And then we want to start the dye. I have the dye set up over there. We're going to smash up those uh, blackberries and add a little bit of um, vinegar to them. And then we're going to see what color we get. I'm excited about this. Oh, I'm good at this. I'm not going to use too much this time of that. I don't think we need it. There's probably enough in here now for two washings. Come on now. Come on, come on. Yeah. Yeah, this is the last washing for sure. For sure. Just want to make sure she's covered. You know, this is Sammy. Sammy's wool. And she is a female, but for some reason I have a habit of calling he's, she's, and she's, he's. I don't know if I'm the only one, but I do that a lot. All right, back on the stove for one more washing. Okay, we are doing our last rinse. I mean, our, yeah, I think we're finished with our washing and we're gonna do our last and final rinse after I get this out. Water's nice and clear. Yeah. That's uh, that's pretty darn clean, I would say. Still debris in there, though. It's amazing. You tell yourself, oh, yeah. I did let the water run a little bit, so it is already preheated a little bit. I'm getting better at this. Sometimes I'm worse, sometimes I'm better. I think I started out a little rusty because it's been a while since I made a video. And the last video that I made was, um, this is hot, so I'm not gonna have to heat it up on the stove right away. I'm just gonna put the, the stuff back in there, the wool back in there. The last video I made was um, with no talking. I just uh, did instructions, which was a little different. A little hot, but I still think, ah! Hot, hot, hot. Okay, a little cooler. I just want to get it hot. Hot, hot, hot. Very hot. I can see a big old leaf. A little leaf. I'm going to take that right out of there. All right. Actually, maybe what I'll do is just kind of let it run softly. And just to make sure I get any soap out. Not really agitating it too much. All right, so now I'm going to add a little vinegar to this rinse water, and this is also going to be the dye water. So you know what? I think I want to have the least amount possible in there. Sometimes I my brain kicks in after the fact. As long as there's enough to, um, can you see that? No, I'll move this back. As long as there is enough, maybe I should have my camera downward. I should probably find some sort of thing to... Wait a minute. Oh, I, got it. I, got it. I got it. I got it. Put it down here on an angle and that way you'll be able to see it. I need like a pedestal or something. Okay, so I'm going to put a little vinegar in here. Let me get this vinegar in. That just helps the, the dye to take. And I'm gonna put that back in there. And that's enough water, it covers it. That's good, I think. I think it will when I flatten it out, let's see. And I'm gonna put a little saucer over it, so it should be good. All right. Actually, maybe I should put the dye in there first. Yeah, so let's make the dye. And I think I want that heated up. I'm gonna put this back on the stove because I want the, the hair follicles to be opened. Not the hair follicles, the, the um, you know, they have the, uh, there you go. They have um, on wool that the, the hairs open and close. I forget what they're called. 
But anyway, I want to heat that back up. So I'm going to put this in there just to heat it up. And then I'll take it back out when it's time. But right now, I want to concentrate on, see if you can see what I'm doing here. We're going to be making the dye. So again, I'm going to pour a little vinegar in with my blender just to make some sort of a liquid. It's going to get loud, but I just got a handful of raspberries. I mean, black raspberries. I don't know. I've never done this. So we're both in for a surprise. We're all in for a surprise. But... say that's pretty pretty dark I like it so now I kind of wanted to run this through can you guys see this yeah I wanted to run this through to try to get seeds up because I knew it would have seeds and then oh that's really kind of cool oh it smells like vinegar <laughs> you know you think it doesn't smell like Raspberry, black raspberries so I have smell. Anyway, I'm gonna pour some of this through and try to contain the seeds. Does anyone want any more stuff going into the wool? Maybe a spoon. I think a little spoon would do better. It's thick. It's like really like almost like a paste. Yeah, that's, that's helping. I hope I'm not pushing the seeds through. I don't think I am. And you can see them collecting on the sides. They may have broken up so small in the blender. It doesn't even matter, who knows? Watch, there's only a little bit of water in there. I don't want to boil that wool. I keep watching it over there. All right, hope it doesn't stain my white thing in my sink. Although it's a lot of junk goes in that sink. And it's still pretty white. I guess that's why they make bleach. Yeah. There's some chunks of black raspberry in there still, but I think that I think that with this color we're going to almost maybe get like a uh, beet color. It looks a lot like beet, doesn't it? We're going to call it black raspberry regardless. We might have to add like a name, like if it's a light color, if it comes out really light, we might have to call it like blackberry fog or something. Hey, actually you guys, I won't name it. You guys name it for me. Somebody send me in a good name after we see what this looks like. will do. I gotta go check my uh, my wool, make sure it's not boiling. Oh, it's nice and warm, which is what I want. Okay. So I would have thought if I didn't put the uh, vinegar in there, I could have made a smoothie out of that, but I didn't really wash those black raspberries either, so it's going down the drain. A lot of group. See, it's, it's saved up real good in there. I don't want to push my luck. Let's not push my luck. Okay. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the pot over here on this. It doesn't burn my camera. I don't think it's too hot for me to handle. No, it's not. And now what I want to do is I want to pull the wool out. And I might want to put her actually through the, um, the lettuce thing to dry her really well. Now I want to put my, uh, let's rinse this off. Santa's helper. 
certain things just stick all year. And here we go. Here's our dye. Natural. Black raspberries right from the garden. How organic is that? going to be cool. I don't think it's going to be real dark though. I think it's going to be like almost a light color. We're going to see. And we're going to heat it up again. Let me put this through here. Just get some of the water out. So when we stick it in there, this I use this little lettuce dryer to get the water out of my wool when I just do small batches. They make a really cool dryer, which I would love to have. Look how well it works. You know, so, all right, just going in. And we'll see, we'll come back and we'll see how much took. We're gonna, look at that. It's pretty, see what happens. We're going this way. I'm gonna put it on the heat a little bit. And then we are going to, um, time how long I'm going to look at the clock five, um, no not five eleven. it's ten after one that clock on my stove every time we have a fa uh, power failure it goes out and I'm tired of it so I leave it so anyway we will be back we'll see what this looks like in about 20 minutes okay so this is our um, stuff Typically when I do dyes, I, the dye comes out of the water. This is unusual, but maybe it's because it's a natural dye. I'm not sure, but we're gonna see what happens. All right. Oops, sorry about that. You guys fell over. I want you to fall over. All right, so we're gonna put this in here. See what happens and we'll see what we get. Maybe I could, you know, I was thinking about that other stuff that I threw out, the, the seeds and the, the holes and everything. Probably could have saved that for some soap making. It looks like it may have taken. We're going to find out. Let's see what we get here. This is what we have wet. I'm gonna rinse it. I'm scared. I'm gonna save this because maybe there was just so much dye in it that I can't use it for another piece. Maybe it just couldn't handle it all. You know how like when you get too much sugar and water it crystallizes? Maybe it was just too, okay. It's too rich for this to take. It's definitely black raspberry. I'm going to dry it. And then we're going to play with it some more. But yeah, we've got it. It's beautiful. It's beautiful. All right, she's going in the bag. She's going in the bag for drying. And then she's going in front of the fan. Okay, get in there. Get in there too. Where's the thing on here? There it is. These little bags you can get at the dollar store. And then I just hang them right in front of my draw on my uh, fan with this little hair clip thing. Huh. All right, when we're dry, we'll be back. So I've decided since I have that extra um dye in the pot it's not as thick as it was i'm going to take the noil that i save 
from Lovebug, and I'm gonna see if I can dye that. Even if it comes out real light, it doesn't matter to me. Um, it's gonna be a nice, beautiful piece of felt. So um, I'm gonna go ahead and dip that in the pot. It's nice and dry, so it should really absorb. So here we go, Lovebug. There's not a lot of, uh, I'm gonna do it all because I'm not sure if it will fit. So let's start with a little bit. And this is all Shetland and oil. This is for love bug. You can always just um, mix it together with the white once it's done and make it a really cool looking piece of felt. You put it on the uh, tackle. my thing on the dye my counter. Just want to make sure it all is under there. I'm gonna put so much in that it won't go under because it's just a little bit of dye left. I'm going to back up a little bit as I let it cool down. Yeah I don't think we should put any more than that in there. And I did throw a saucer and on top of the last batch. Let's see, all right, I'm gonna let that heat up. It's a little cool. Let it heat up a little bit, and let's see what happens with that. So here we are, here is our wool. And you know what? It smells fruity, it's so funny. I didn't realize it would smell fruity, but it smells a little fruity. Anyway, I think it's beautiful. It came out lovely. Some places took, some places are a little lighter or have this kind of muted color about it. It's interesting. It's interesting. Some of the tips are really dark, really shiny. Interesting. So I'm going to put this now on the um, tackle and comb it out and see what we get. I'm excited about it. I have the other one from the Shetland drying now. So um, we'll see what happens. So here we're back in the Winding Willow Room South. <laughs> I call it the Winding Willow Room South because the original Winding Willow Room is outside. And what happens is it's hard for me to um, work from there because I have to travel back and forth. I don't have any running water and stuff. So I made this little room in my house. It's so funny because I worked on years for that to um, be something. And here I am in the house anyway. But it's still the Winding Willow Room. We have a Winding Willow Room North and the Winding Willow Room South. I can't believe that this smells fruity. I think that's so funny. That's so cool. It's like really crispy too. It's, it's very crispy. So we'll see. We'll just pile it on here. I'm gonna comb it out and see what we get. Lots of little locks. Um, I may, um, if I can make a few colors, what I'd like to do is I'd like to make samples of my wool. Like this is all my wool. So, if I can make some sample cards up with little, um, you know, descriptions of this is from this sheep, that's from that sheep. That way people, if they get interested in my product, they'll know what it will be, feel like after, because it definitely feels different after it's dyed. It's a totally different feel than before. So it's kind of fun learning. And I learned, oh, I forgot the name of it already, but I learned that you have to, sometimes to get dyes to take, we got lucky with this one, but certain dyes have trouble taking. You have to use either um, onion skins or different things, which is probably what we would have had to have used with this color because it would have been similar. A lot of people use alum. Um, what did they call it? Oh, I can't remember. I just read about it as I was waiting for the wool to dry. Um, but I don't know. Anyhow. Um, so I'm going to look into that. I'm learning, you know, we're learning together, learning together, but this came out really nice. I'm really pleased. 
Um, so not too uh, worried, I'm not too worried with what's gonna happen here. I mean, I'm totally pleased, totally pleased. It's beautiful locks. You know, I'm just really new at all of this, quite frankly. The only thing I'm really experienced with is the sheep. Raising sheep, breeding sheep. And uh, my friend Christina from Tamarack Hills Farm just posted her baby got ones online. Oh my gosh, they are so beautiful. That's where my voice came from. Uh, my friend Diane gifted me um, two Gotland boys as a present, which is a really nice present because they're really expensive sheep. So uh, I was very pleased with that. Um, and uh, well, I think this is pretty. I'm liking it. That back there. I want to get my leg. want to do this a few times that up there this chair is in my way it's a pretty little uh, fleece we've got here now it's a nice colorful fleece it's got a pretty nice staple nice long staple There's a tiny little noil in here that took really, really dark. It's like, why? You have to ask yourself, why do they take so dark some things and then others not? Who knows? Who knows? Anyway, I'm going to start pulling some of this off. I'm going to lay it up here. I'm not dizzing this because I'm not quite sure what I want to do with it. I'm just going to pull it off to make some locks of top. So this would be White Gotland and um, the breed that was, now with Gotland sheep, they came to America um, through AI. And so you can't, you know, they had to be AI to a different sheep. So a lot of people use Shetland. A lot of people use BFL. Well, fortunately we had Lincoln and BFL. So we've got some beautiful wool here, you know, and this particular gauntlet being that it's white is probably low percentage still, whereas my boys are high percentage. So, you know, so it's really, this wool is up and coming, but I really love this luster on this, this got some nice shine on this wool. Nice shine. Take off as much as I can get of the top. And look how beautiful. Look how beautiful and light and lofty that is. Isn't that gorgeous? It's beautiful. I love the color. It's not quite pink, it's almost a mauvey color. It's just real pretty. Put that over there. And let's trade this one off. was quite a bit of debris in here. It's like, I really thought I had this clean, you know? Unbelievable. I think I got, right here is the, a poopy coming out. That's yucky. I really thought this was so clean. It's funny. What you think, what you think. It's beautiful though. make this a nice pile of another oil. It's nice when you pull it off these combs. I'm kind of spoiled now by these combs. Because it just makes such perfect wool. Makes such perfect wool. And that stuff is still usable. I mean that stuff's still usable right there. It's just that that is just stunning. And I think I'm gonna blend that with something. I'm not sure what yet, but 
I think I'm going to blend it with another color. Maybe another color that we dye. I think it'll be really pretty. And then we'll spin it out and then maybe we'll make a pair of socks. Who knows? Who knows? Oop, that's a yucky. That's still poopy. That's the nice thing about these combs is it really sorts through the poopy. And you get left with just the purdy. I gave myself a hole in my finger yesterday from these combs. They're dangerous. I got a little too aggressive. <laughs> I gave myself a hole. Here's some noilies. See how you can pull this stuff right out? I'm going to put it right here in the noily box. Save my oils for felt. Makes beautiful felt. This stuff makes beautiful sky. Oh, this is definitely sky color. This is that sunset pinky color. Ooh, I've got an idea. I promised my friend, Brendan, that I would paint a barn for him. And I just haven't had my painting stuff out. And he sent me the picture. I think I might just felt it. I think he would like that. It'd be so much. Everybody's got a painting. But how many people have felted paintings? You know? Maybe I'll do that. It'd be beautiful. It'd be something fun to do. And maybe I'll make a video out of it. I have to go through that again. Still. Yuckies, but they'll go, they'll go through again. So, anyway, it's, it's a whole lot of fun doing this. I'm trying to think, what could we make with this? I'm, I'm thinking, if I do enough colors, maybe I could uh, felt some pictures with you guys. Sim maybe just a simple flower that for Christmas, you know, we could make a pretty flower picture that could be framed you know something for a, a close friend so I'm definitely going to be doing crafty stuff for Christmas this year I'm so just my friends and I are so sick and tired of stuff that can't be used it's like you know if, it, if you can't eat it or if you can't wear it it's like I don't want it you know but memories like this this is something simple. Even if they didn't want to put it on their wall, they could save it in a box. It's like a photograph, you know? It's definitely something interesting. You don't just come across every day. Anyway. I like what we got. I like what we got, and I'm so glad. Mordant, that was the word, mordant. I'm glad we didn't have to use a mordant because I'm not sure that I have one. I do have, I think, a red onion we could have used. I guess mordants, what they do is you soak the wool in it prior to dyeing it, and it um, helps it to retain the color. But they use alum, which is a chemical. They said you can use lemon and different things, but um, we were lucky this worked. I, you know, I thought of vinegar with egg dyes because it always gets the dye to stay. So I thought, oh, maybe it'll be good for wool dye. And apparently it is. So that's it. And I'm going to put that stuff back on too because I'm sure there's a lot more that I can take out of this stuff. If I don't comb it through again, I might put it on the long comb, this one. But my homemade one, I love my homemade one. I cannot tell you everything. I've 
made homemade so far. I've been happy with. I want to make uh, that Diz. I saw somebody had a Diz online on YouTube somewhere that was made with PVC pipe. And she just took like a curve of PVC pipe, maybe about this wide, maybe, you know, it was just about that long. She drilled different size holes in it and sanded it all down nice. What a wonderful Diz. And hang, you can hang on to it, you know? You get older with me, like, you know, gotta deal with arthritis and stuff. You need something to hang on to. So that helps. So, all right, this is the last of it until we got the other stuff from the Shetland. Now this is the stuff from the Gotland. The other one will be actually the Noily stuff. So we're gonna be using that. We're not even gonna comb that stuff out. We're just going to use that strictly for felt. And uh, I might blend it, or I might comb it just to blend it. But um, yeah, so we'll see. We'll see what we decide to do with it. But I feel, um, encouraged. I, 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 it's hard when my husband's home, you know, he's working from home. So I try to start a video and he walks in and, you know, or he's have he starts a meeting talking in the middle of my video and he's talking with his people at work and I'm like, oh, so it's hard. Like today I cleaned up the kitchen a little bit. Yeah, I don't want you guys to have to look at my dirty dishes and stuff, you know? So I cleaned up my kitchen and I walked out of the room to get something. I came back in and he's in there cooking. And I was like, oh man. So I told him, I said, look, I'm trying. He said, he said, oh, you, you have your hair done nice. And I said, well, I said, I'm getting ready to make a video. <gasps> oh, so he's just tell me. And I said, well, I'm gonna, because oh, I'm never gonna get any videos done. So that's it. I'm gonna start telling him, sorry, stay out of the kitchen. You want something? Get it now. You know, he kind of eats when he feels like eating because you know he gets on a roll with work. You know, and, and uh, he doesn't want to stop what he's doing. And then by the time he does stop, he's hungry. You know, and he's kind of an interesting person. He wants to eat when he wants to eat. He's not the kind of guy that you know you you have to sit down and have dinner ready for. He's like. He's not ready for it. So, you know, which is a nice thing because I don't have to have dinner at a certain time, you know. But um, when he's ready to eat, he's ready to eat. So, I thought, all right. Well, that was the one good thing about having the Winding Willow Room out there. But still, can't be dying wool out there. I don't have any water. I don't have access to that stuff. So... No, I've got to have a different color um, to blend with this. Something light, or maybe something dark. Maybe greenish, maybe a greenish color. Almost like that greenish gray color. I don't know. But, so, what have we decided to call this color? You guys have to let me know what you think it should be called. I mean, it's really a pinky kind of color. It's a pretty, it's muted, but yet it's bright. It's interesting. It's not like a neon color. It's, uh, but it's not like a primary color. It's, interesting what was it I'll figure out right away each time I put this through this head all like when I blend it and stuff oh maybe I'll blend it on the blending board 
Maybe I could put some starfire in there or something nice and shimmery. I still gotta comb through that. I'm still getting goobers in there. I don't like her ends were really dirty. And they even with all that those washings that we did, they the locks didn't open up on the ends. Unbelievable. dark noils it's crazy like really dark of it. Keep them in my way. Here's our beautiful fiber. And then I, whoop, I'm down here. Here, I'll just hold it. Look at that. This is gorgeous. It's beautiful. Light and fluffy. And what's that color? What is that color? Send it in. Somebody's going to name that, not me. Let me know what you think, guys. Anyway, this is Angela from Farm Fiber and Art signing off. And I hope you had a fun time. And we learned something new. We learned about Mordens. <laughs> anyway, uh, we got lucky, though. We got lucky. And um, I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like us and subscribe. And if there's anything you want me to try... Oh, I wanted to um, tell you that that stuff that we threw out, the extra goopy stuff from the raspberries, that would have been great in soap. Maybe we'll do soap making one day. That should be fun, right? Okay, take care. Bye. Subscribe and like. Thank you.